as a visiting lecturer government college university faisalabad today i would like to discuss about the uh, pancreatitis uh, if a person uh, present uh, in this topic i will discuss the key points or characteristic signs and symptom with which a patient can be uh, presented to the hospital and if a patient present with the following uh, symptoms and signs then the, uh, we can make our provisional diagnosis of pancreatitis so basically first of all uh, uh, we uh, should know what is pancreatitis it is the inflammation of pancreas and it can be of two type uh, either acute or chronic so in case of acute pancreatitis uh, this is uh, mid, uh, usually associated with gallstones and alcoholism and if a patient present uh, have acute pancreatitis he will present with the symptoms of severe pain in the epigastrium which radiates to the back or it's like a penetrating pain and the pain may spread to the whole abdomen uh, if we talk about the aggravating factor of this pain and so the pain is worse on lying supine and the patient gets relief by sitting up or uh, uh, if uh, his or her trunk is flexed or knees drawn up and uh, nausea and vomiting are more common uh, symptom uh, in acute pancreatitis and distension of abdomen indicates the chemical peritonitis if we talk about the sign of the acute pancreatitis then the patient will be in anxious and distressed due to pain and uh, blood pressure may be low and pulse may be rapid in case of acute pancreatitis in case of uh, acute pancreatitis if we talk about the tenderness then it is not so marked as uh, uh, expected from the severity of the pain and patient condition as the patient is worse but the, there is no tenderness in case of acute pancreatitis and ascites may be present in that case if uh, there is a severe necrotizing form of acute pancreatitis then there may be blue red discoloration of the skin in the flanks which uh, uh, we call as drunk turner sign and uh, the blue re bluish red discoloration around the umbilicus is called colon sign and uh, in case of acute pancreatitis bowel sound may be diminished or absent to can if a patient present with the uh, already in, uh, described sign and symptom then we can make our provisional diagnosis of acute pancreatitis and to confirm this uh, diagnosis we majorly perform the following uh, uh, investigations uh, which include the uh, cbc in which the leukocytosis is uh, frequent and if we perform the C, uh, serum amylase uh, pancreatic, pancreatic enzyme test then the serum amylase level are raised within 24 hours and remains so for 1 to 3 days and uh, if the serum amylase level is persi persistently raised then it suggests the formation of pseudocyst and uh, level 3 times upper limit of normal are nearly diagnostic uh, serum isomylase is more specific as high level of total amylase are also seen in other condition like salivary gland disease, gut perforation or infarction and acidemia. If we talk about the serum lipase levels then in this case it remains raised for one to two weeks and are more specific for the diagnosis of uh, acute pancreatitis elevated uh, so the elevated levels of lipase and the trypsin are diagnostic in that case uh, if uh, we perform the serum calcium level then it will be low hyperglycemia is common during the first few days uh, if uh, ascites develop in that uh, patients then we perform the acetic, acetic fluid examination and the nature of the ascetic fluid will be exudative and uh, it can be hemorrhagic so amylase activity in the ascetic fluid is high which is more than 20,000 unit per liter Similarly, pleural fluid amylase level are also very high. If we talk about the non-invasive uh, uh, radiological investigation, then the plain x-ray abdomen provides useful information in up to half of the patients. 
and ultrasound scan may show enlarged pancreas, ascites, gallstones, pseudocyst, abscess or hemorrhage. And uh, CT scan is the best uh, imaging technique uh, for uh, pancreatitis as it uh, can clearly define the extent of necrosis and uh, eventually help in predicting uh, morbidity and uh, mortality. Uh, so that was uh, uh, all about the acute pancreatitis that how can we diagnose this with the help of sign and symptoms and confirm confirmatory diagnosis with the help of the investigations so if we talk about the chronic pancreatitis so it can present as recurrent episode of acute pancreatitis or as chronic damage uh, with uh, uh, persistent pain or uh, malabsorption. So uh, the causes of uh, chronic pancreatitis uh, are, uh, are mostly the same as those of acute pancreatitis that are uh, gallstones, alcohol uh, and uh, alcohol being the most common while about 25 cases are idiopathic in that in case of chronic pancreatitis. So if a patient present with the chronic pancreatitis, he will show the symptom of recurrent epigastric pain attack occur at intervals of weeks or two months. And the attack is usually pre precipitated by alcohol or food intake and the pain begins gradually and, uh, and this pain persists for uh, even days to weeks. And uh, same as that of acute pancreatitis, the pain may radiate to the back and uh, same are the aggravating and relieving factor as uh, I discussed earlier that patient feels relieved by leaning forward or uh, in other words we can say the trunk flexed and the pain is deep scattered and it is not relieved by antacids and uh, patient may present with diabetes due to endocrine deficiency or malabsorption and the sign if we talk about the sign then the patient may be malnourished uh, as uh, uh, there may be mild diffuse tenderness in the abdomen which is a differential sign from that of acute pancreatitis which in which we so in acute pancreatitis we discuss that the there is no tenderness is not marked but in case of a chronic pancreatitis tenderness diffuse tenderness is present and the patient may be joined us due to obstruction of common bile duct as a result of fibrosis within the pancreas so the in case of chronic pancreatitis the patient may present with the sign of joinders which are absent which would be absent in the case of acute pancreatitis and if we talk about the investigation to confirm the uh, our diagnosis then the serum amylase and lipase level are not elevated pancreatitis uh, pancreatic uh, calcification is visible uh, due to relapsing uh, uh, of acute pancreatitis uh, so uh, visible visible on plain x-ray abdomen in small percentage of patients so uh, in, in case of uh, chronic pancreatitis to uh, cure the pancreatic pancreatic obstruction we uh, perform ERCP uh, which uh, which uh, which can be diagnostic and therapeutic so uh, in case of diagnostic it shows the dilatation of the pancreatic ducts uh, as there is a blockage at the level of head uh, uh, due to the blockage of pancreatic ducts uh, and ultrasound scan might show a shrunken atrophic pancreas a sign of necrosis irregular contour of pancreas and even the pancreatic calcification and, and dilated pancreatic ducts. If we perform the blood glucose and serum bilirubin and serum alkaline phosphate in the test for malabsorption, uh, uh, in case uh, if the patient has developed uh, the diabetes, then the blood sugar level may be fluctuated. And in serum uh, and the serum bilirubin will uh, may be high if the patient have developed uh, joinders and the serum alkaline phosphate phosphatase is, uh, will also be raised in case of obstruction obstructive joinders and the test for the malabsorption are normal in some patients so that uh, was uh, few signs and symptoms few characteristic points uh, in, uh, uh, through which we can differentiate between the patient of uh, acute pancreatitis and chronic pancreatitis as well as we can diagnose the both of them on the basis of these signs and symptoms and we can confirm 
or diagnosis uh, by uh, performing the specific investigation for the, both of the cases so that was uh, uh, a brief uh, knowledge about acute and chronic pancreatitis thank you